You're walking in the woods. There's no one around and your phone is dead. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot him. Hello there, my name is Graham and today we're going to be taking a look at Scallion's Daughter, an Old West scenario found in supplement Down Darker Trails, published by Chaosium and written by Kevin Ross. Here we find ourselves in 1870s on the Texas side of the Mexican border near the Rio Grande. A ranch hand has been killed and the law isn't too bothered about his death. However, with tensions rising between the Romero and Scallion families, these ranches need to be sorted out and the players are asked to investigate and get to the bottom of the mysterious murder before the feud spills out and into the open. So what's actually going on here? Well. With the Scanlans buying property from the Romeros to build their own ranch, destroying a snake den in the process, Yig cursed the wife, Frances of Everett Scallion. When her two daughters were born, one was a twisted spawn of Yig, which Everett killed and swore the doctor, Dr. Collins, to secrecy, as Frances went mad and committed to a nearby convent. Everett raised his only human daughter, Juliet, alone, and for years everything was fine, until one day Juliet discovers that Violet is not dead at all and is resurrected to punish her father further. When the two become best friends and wanting to be more like her sister, Violet desires a boyfriend much like Vicente is to Juliet, but due to her monstrous and animalistic nature, she only kills them instead, the first victim being the scallion ranch hand called Nick Clayton. Where I enjoyed this scenario, there is a lot of work for the Keeper to do to set up and run this one as intended. The scenario is very much an open sandbox, old school type that gives you the bare minimum information for it to function and has a reasonable amount of fleshing out for the Keeper to do in advance to expand the world into a living and breathing entity with the two main locations, the Romero and the Scallion Ranch covered in two short paragraphs just giving you the outlay of the buildings and nothing else. This is where you're going to be spending the bulk of the game so I would say you want some confidence in improv uh, as this one will definitely throw you some curveballs as the players wander off into unplanned areas of the ranch and uh, it is nothing more than empty shells. The scenario itself is linked to San Rafael, one of the fleshed out towns within the Down Darker Trails setting book. It provides everything you need to run the adventure out of there and I think the other scenario provided in the book is also linked to San Rafael as well, creating a really nice hub to start off the campaign should you wish to do so with a, a very lived in town. But it's a little ironic that it's so well fleshed out and mentioned in this scenario a fair bit because it's quite redundant uh, within this scenario setting uh, where the ranches are barebone and vital. Running this as a standalone scenario, one shot, I would recommend removing most of San Rafael as it offers nothing to the overall story and is literally just padding or a slice of life in the Old West, but uh, without offering any substantial plot benefits to the actual story. If your players are hardcore RPers and you feel they would enjoy shooting the shit in the town during the night, then go for it, but otherwise cut this town off like a vestigial limb and keep the events on the ranch at all times. On top of this I would suggest scrubbing the scenario of all names linked to Romeo and Juliet to turn down the cheese and notch and disabuse your players and yourself from quoting from that play and having your eyes roll all the time during this scenario. The easiest way to do this is just rename Juliet and perhaps even the Romero Ranch because uh, they are too on the nose for it to be anything but so blatant uh, as to give away the entirety of the story almost. And um, the more the Romeo Juliet stuff is hidden and under a layer of a retelling, the better this scenario gets because as soon as they know there's two children in love who come from opposite families then they pretty much are going to shut down and not care about anything else really and uh, it's hard to keep them on track with anything other than uh, the cliches and the silly humour. So do yourself a favour and uh, make sure you purge this clean. 
The scenario offers many ways for the investigators to enter the story. The main two being as a ranch hand discovering the body or brought in to solve the crime from the nearby town of San Rafael. There is a small problem with the story here with the scenario going into depth about how the US Marshals aren't involved and they have thrown it to the town marshal, uh, Matteo, in San Rafael. This would never happen. Town marshals are elected by the, the town themselves and have zero authority outside its limits. To solve this, you just say the US Marshals are out of town in business and the, the ranchers will need to sort it out themselves or find someone to do so or it's going to blow up into a feud. But for notes of reference, town marshals are basically chief of police and have deputies under them, which would be the policemen. They are not that special and their duties included things like picking up litter and shooting stray dogs. If I were to play this scenario again and want to include San Rafael, I would start this story more organically in town, opening up in one of the saloons, the Longhorn, with the ranch hands from both the Romeros and the Scallions present causing the town marshal Matteo to kick out the scallions for firing off guns or beating the Romeros in a barroom brawl, bringing the PCs in in a violent and quick way right at the start. This is a little West Side story, so try not to have the ranchers dance and click their fingers at each other uh, if you can help it. Having a Romero ranch hand show up at the Longhorn Saloon to fetch the marshal and the doctor is probably the best and most organic way to start it as the barroom brawl ends and the scallions are kicked out. As this will inform the players as to the two feuding ranches and allows the marshal or the town marshal Matthias to tell them that he has no authority outside the town and will have to look somewhere else for some to solve the, the mystery or the feud will blow up in their faces. This uh, gives the PCs who are present a call to arms and they can easily pick up this investigation from there. If you're wishing to stretch the scenario out to a couple of days, which the scenario sort of implies that it wants you to do, give them the time uh, in town to get what they need, uh, get hold of the doctor and then head out back to the ranch. Uh, this gives the ranch hands and the doctors time to quiz the messenger on the ride back and invites the PCs to do likewise. I started the PCs out already en route to the ranches from San Rafael. Uh, this cuts down the scenario by perhaps about an hour and it stops San Rafael having to be involved entirely. Starting the players as the ranch hand will work fine too, but there's some preparation you have to do because there's a lot of expedition dump on the backstory to give the players as they will assume that they know a lot about the two families being working on the ranch already. If you do this opener, I would suggest that these ranch hands are new and they don't know too much but just uh, mild rumours and hearsay from the other ha older hands and they're going to get the finger pointed at them for finding the dead body, so they'll have to clear their name. This does introduce the possibility of someone riding back to town to get a real investigator like a Pinkerton to look into this and could open up a fun dynamic for you there as well as they stock the same locations and look at each other with suspicion. The scenario assumes that days will pass during the investigation into the death, however there is, isn't a lot to go around to justify the PCs sleeping and creating that feeling of a full day unless you take your time in Raphael and turn up at night and perhaps the players discover the convent as well. The distances provided on the map between the two ranches are only a few miles and horses even just walking very very casually can go to most places within an hour this is one of the reasons I decided to condense the scenario and cut out the convent and San Rafael to offer a much tighter location and a better pace to the scenario itself. But if you wish to do a slow burn scenario, I would introduce some sandstorms that will occasionally trap the party or even isolate certain uh, PCs away from the others and give them time to properly get to know the NPCs on the ranches which is where most of the story is told anyway, rather than any found clues that can be gained from moving around the ranch. But this is all on the keeper's shoulders to do and ultimately as the ranches are fairly bare bone at best, 
introducing the trappings of life like food and drink, like some wholesome lemonade, and forcing the children of the ranches to perform some awful singing to entertain the guests is probably the easiest way forward. It isn't too much hassle. Arriving at the Romero ranch with Dr. Collins in tow is critical as he has the whole story of what is really going down here. Unless you fancy heading back to San Rafael and really sort of going into that uh, longer burn sort of type of play that this scenario wants you to do, uh, have him here and informing him about uh, what is going on will bring the wrath of Yig later on as well. So it's kind of key to have him keep popping up as they set about investigating the murder. I'd also have him being a terrible doctor, so the PCs are forced to investigate the body by themselves and not rely on the doctor too heavily. Have him make general assumptions about Clayton and not go into in depth about the actual forensics of it. He is just a general practitioner after all and not an investigator. He can only give his opinion of what he understands and knows and that shouldn't be much at all. I would also have him tell the PCs constantly that he delivered almost all the children on both ranches. This is to make him a go-to when the idea of a second child from the Scallions arises. When it comes to the body of Clayton, there's not a huge amount to go on. I had Clayton's remains brought back to the Romero ranch and put in a barn to broil in the sun to create a little bit more drama with torrents of flies as they open the barn door and creating a second location for the creek to be investigated rather than having them both in the same place. I also introduced a strand of the long hair here uh, as well as that they'll find in the creek too to basically Hammer home that suspicion and uh, add Cecilia Romero, uh, the mother, uh, to the list of suspects straight away. Let the PCs look around the ranch and have some of the ranch hands shirking their duties to looky loo at the newcomers, offering up some opinions and spilling some gossip on the two families. There's a lot of fun to be had here and the list of NPCs available to uh, harangue into helping or hindering the PCs is quite deep. Uh, so just go with the ones you like and uh, see where it takes you. Again, improv is quite important here. While at the Romero's, you will have to find a way to introduce the two brothers as well, which will bring up the plot about Juliet and their midnight adventures at the creek. Having Vicente, or Romeo, being told by his father to show them the spot where Clayton was found is ideal and giving him a black eye will be enough to spark a conversation to introduce these elements of the story. While travelling the ranches to the creek, I had the PCs constantly followed by some of the Scallion ranch hands, having orders to beat and scare any of the Romeros that they come across. I'd also have them ask questions as to where Clayton is if they should be interacted with, as he is one of theirs after all. Don't have them shoot to kill or even being overly aggressive, they should just act as bullies and introduce some danger and threat to the PCs moving around the ranches. And if they are confronted and caught, uh, they can offer up their own side of the story, perhaps elaborating that the Romero boys uh, harass Juliet with her being the only female of age on the two ranches and it's and the constant skirt chasing caused Everett to be sick of it and he started to order them to be beaten. If they let spill that Clayton is dead, uh, they can become more sombre and will start to say that the feud will definitely be on now, raising the stakes even further. There is a few events you might want to introduce here as they travel across the ranches, the dead cattle and uh, definitely some snakes that would be good to letter both of these into the background. Having snakes act unnaturally and watching their every move as they edge forward in their investigation. What they find in the Crete is very little but I think it's important to offer the event the trail of the snake and multiple tracks from the fall into both ranches. This will double down the long black hair and if Vicente is with them he can let them in a little bit more about Juliet and her long black hair and how he can't get her to run away with him and she won't tell him why. This should throw some suspicion her way and edge them towards heading up to the Scallions Ranch.
I wouldn't string the players along too much as this scenario is quite obvious with its investigation and if you shut down the tracking too much you might just look like a dick and leave the players with no leads left as everything you follow is grind to a halt as you deny every idea they come up with but giving them the same clues again and again which will just cause frustration as you offer just more dead ranchers that are victims of violets so i wouldn't do this unless you want to up the antes and have Violet glimpsed at some point. If you do so, then they will definitely move down the creek and find Violet's lair. I had this happen with one of my groups, and they actually went into the den as well. I dissuaded them from going much forward with a swarm of snakes that followed them out like a tidal wave, and uh, this made them, them back out and move up to the Scallion Ranch. They may choose to blow it up with some dynamite, but uh, if you show them multiple routes in and out of the den, she should be fine and they will swallow the lie that she got out in the first place. After the creek, the players might turn around and head back to the Romero's ranch. If so, have them find that the good doctor has taken the body of Clayton back to the scallions, knowing both families he is going to try and act as a goodwill ambassador and cool temper somewhat on the other side. If they stay the night and pick up where they left off in the morning, I would also perhaps have them spot Vicente leave during the night if they make a good roll as he goes down to the creek to meet with Juliet. And perhaps they'll even find his older brother Alphonse dead the next morning too as he goes after the boy instead, making the situation worse. With the, the death of the older brother, I would have the Romeros go all out and take the death as a sign or declaration of war. Have them go into a war footing, getting all the guns out and start a posse and looking to take on the Scallions in a full out engagement. However, the players are more likely to head up to the Scallions instead and see what is to be found there as it is a new and undiscovered location as yet and I would have them arrive as Dr Collins is talking to Everett about the death of Clayton with the body still in the back of the wagon. This opens up a few avenues for the PCs to pry into. Depending on the time, you can have Everett and Juliet entertain the investigators as well and have Collins open up about the second child should they ask about Juliet's heritage. This is where your events for Yig's child should be ready to go as the good doctor says just a little bit too much and the PCs lean forward to hear a little bit more. One of my players utterly failed to save the doctor as the giant snake came writhing out of the woodwork and bit the good doctor. And the second group uh, almost cut off his leg with a rusty tin opener to save his life, but decided on the better option of an axe instead. This is a good scene and it opens up the way to distract everyone from Juliet slipping away to meet Vicente in the creek. Finding his daughter missing, I would have Everett order a hunt of the creek and he will tell the PCs that if he finds Vicente first, this time he will kill him rather than just give him a mild beating. And that should be enough for them to get into action and ride ahead of the search party, looking to find the two lovers in the creek before anyone else. The players can also learn about the mother being still alive here, and if they really want to go to the convent to get her, then I suppose you have to really let them. But I would cut this out entirely, as it will kill the entire pacing as the third act looms. If you really want to include it, I would perhaps use it as a small scene at the end as some sort of closure and uh, helping mend the feud between the two actual families. But um, for now, the pace is on, the action is here and to move the whole party miles away to the north and let these two families just duke it out seems rather counterproductive. Hunting for these two star-crossed lovers during the night is where I decide to use this stampede, just to sow some confusion and drama as they move across the ranch for one last time. But both times I used it, it failed to have much of an impact, um, so I showed the snakes hanging off the stampeding cattle as they went past and letting them listen and look around seeing that there are snakes all around them as Yig's wrath darkens along with the skies 
I would make the two kids pretty easy to find as they have moved to the creek and it's a fairly straight and easy location just to scout around and they should be acting like the embarrassed teenage know-alls that they are. Once they find them and they've had that conversation, it's time to look for a solution to the feud and you can introduce the elements that Julia won't leave with Vicente and with the right encouragement they can be sent off towards the Romero's ranch and then I would have them hear the scream of a ranch hand being snared by Violet nearby. Play it out as you like with Violet not quite understanding the concept of a boyfriend and perhaps embracing one of the PCs too should they get too close. While Juliet and Vicente might still be with them or headed off towards the other ranch, I would have Juliet stick around in the bushes and watching, ready to jump down and defend her sister should they try to kill her. It is here they're going to have a moral dilemma to try and move her out the way. And it is entirely up to you whether you want her to take a bullet for Violet or not. It, this uh, could be just her way of letting her get a head start as Violet run towards her den, where the PCs will inevitably corner her and kill her. There might be a little bit of a problem here with the story stopping the players acting so violently just to mow Violet down because Yig has brought her back from death once before, they might assume that she cannot be killed and will just be resurrected again and again. This is something that uh, you're just going to have to sort of deal with and uh, I would not even introduce the idea that she was brought back at all and have the good doctor um, being sworn to secrecy and the father just hiding her on the ranch, tolerating her presence and hand waving off any reports about dead cattle here and there. This way that there's no real pretense and it's quite straightforward. So by plucking that piece of information out of the scenario, uh, you'll stop that from happening as well. In conclusion, Scallion's Daughter is a fun scenario that has uh, a lot of potential should, uh, should you wish to uh, spend some time with it and really think out how you want to, to use the events and the situations and locations. It will take a, a lot of effort on your part to get it just quite right and I've run it twice now and if I was to run it again for a third time I would definitely tweak it and do it differently, introducing that uh, starting scene probably in San Rafael. So I can't really recommend this for new GMs but any that have uh, some experience in fairly old scenarios that would be like this or then have at it, you'll have a great time here. And with that, thanks for listening and I'll see you again some other time. His head topples to the floor, expressionless. You fall to your knees and catch your breath. You're finally safe.